Okay, so hello everyone and welcome to this week's Rigor webinar. Today we have a very special webinar as we are going to present the latest version of Rigor, Rigor 8.5 Fort Worth. Uh, this past month we focused on user experience making hundreds of improvements and to help our customers become even more efficient. With our current and future clients in mind, we released critical updates and new powerful features. And today we will show you what we added to Rigor to get work done faster and more easily while eliminating errors, delays and complications associated with traditional process of papers, spreadsheets and emails. But first let me introduce myself. My name is Dasha and I'm marketing manager here in Ringer. Uh, today's agenda, we will show you all new features, additions, and improvements, uh, including new dashboards, integrations, and interface update. And now let's get started, and I want to pass microphone to Michael. Hello, Michael. Hello, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, I'm really excited to present a new release of Rigor today. And uh, we'll start from the development history and uh, a little bit talk about the new release uh, and um, uh, the product development roadmap. So um, yeah, the entire goal of Rigor uh, development is the continuous improvements based on the client's requirements uh, and uh, moving forward developing uh, the um, new features and modules uh, with focus on the business analytics uh, and uh, Rigor approach is all in one. Uh, we trying to have everything in uh, one um, umbrella, under one umbrella, but if we do not have uh, any capabilities, we just uh, do uh, lots of integrations. And uh, we start naming Rigor uh, different, uh, use, use different names or different releases uh, from uh, 2018. Uh, so 6.0 was Midland, uh, 6.5 Houston, then Oklahoma City, then Phoenix, then Calgary, and Odessa. So, and um, right now we are going to present Rigor 8.5, uh, which is a release of this summer. Uh, we're focusing the accurate data for management oil field operations, uh, achieving operation excellence. And this summer we will present, uh, we're presenting Rigor 8.5 Fort Worth. Uh, with uh, focusing on the a different look, uh, the, it will be a little bit different homepage, the improvements of user uh, experience and user interfaces, uh, focusing on the business analytics, uh, safety development, CRM development, mobile oil field, and uh, integration. So let's talk and see how we uh, will uh, what we will show in uh, the new version of Rigor. And um, now we'll start from the interfaces and I'd like to pass the mic to Indra. So she will present uh, uh, all the new interfaces and uh, home pages. New Rigor release, Rigor 8.5 Fort Worth brings a bunch of new improvements together with a new interface and new look. So when you will be connecting to this new release of Rigor, the first thing you will notice is an updated look and new icons of Rigor yellow menu line. So each module will have a new icon. The next update is in Rigor homepage. So there you will find new additional tabs based on the user loads. So you can find a chart tab, safety and purchases. When you go to a chart tab, you will see this information such as uh, employee change request or vacation request documents based on the document status. So you will be able to see if any document requires some updates, uh, some improvements and so on. Then you will get a diagram of certificates expiry dates. So by this diagram, you will notice that some certificates are expiring soon and will require to be renewed. If you want to get a list of these certificates, you can just go to expiry date report. Then you click on this button, it will generate a report and provides you the list of all expiring certificates. Then when you're scrolling down on this dashboard, you will find a diagram of the number of employees in your rigor database. 
together with the totals of documents based on the periods. And at the bottom of this dashboard, you will find a quick links to the main documents and the main reports for this module. The second tab, what you will find in updated trigger is a safety tab. In a safety tab, you will find information about the safety module. And here you can see a diagram of the daily jobs and the different safety documents, such as job safety analysis, vehicle ins inspection, uh, hot work permit, or safety checklist. And you can just, by selecting different checkbox, um, see different documents by the calendar. Another, what you can do here is you can use a filter so you can analyze different data based on departments or the managers. Then if you're going down, you can find a diagram of the safety incidents. So you will see based on the date, if there were any incidents during the jobs and the totals of the documents. And on the bottom of this dashboard, you will find um, quick links to the main documents and uh, main reports of this module. And the third tab, what you will see in new rigor release is the purchase tab. Rigor Purchase tab in the homepage is available for the users with Rigor Purchase Manager role assigned and it provides such as information as totals of purchase order requests, purchase order or purchase invoice documents based on the statuses. Then you can see a diagram of daily jobs and you can select what information of what documents you want to see in this diagram, such as purchase order request, purchase order, bill of lading, purchase invoice. Then if you're scrolling down, you can find uh, open purchase order based on each day quantity of these documents and the totals based on the periods. And same as in all homepage dashboards, on the bottom you will find a quick link links to the main documents and the main reports for the purchase module. So these, so these are the main updates, what you will find in the new look of Rigor 8.5 forward and in Rigor updated the home page. Thank you, Indra. Um, and um, yeah, there are several several improvements of the um, and this is there's a new look uh, which we have in in uh, version six eight point five, and there are several uh, updates on uh, the catalog. So uh, Indra will present the uh, item cards as well. So all those improvements which we have right now in uh, uh, item cards and unit numbers. New release of Rigger 8.5 brings some updates and to rental unit and unit number cards. So if you go to items list in your Rigger menu and select an item, the new updates you will find in the price tab. So here now you can see not only the price list and price agreement listed for this particular item together with the prices, but you can find an all the purchase prices for this item. So these purchase prices you will you will find in any type of rigor item, and you can uh, compare the prices of purchase for this item. Another update is in a unit card. So if you let go to the unit card. And let's open a unit card. So here, if you're using a maintenance module, on the bottom of the unit card, you will find the maintenance tab with the all maintenance records for that particular 
unit. So you will find the generated maintenance card, what was posted for this unit in Rigger database. Then you will see what maintenance drivers are applied for this particular unit. And then what are the parameters of the maintenance for this unit? So if it requires some maintenance, what is the due date and other parameters in relation with the maintenance procedure. So if you go to any unit number in rigor which requires maintenance and the maintenance is set up and running for this unit, you can easily see the history of the maintenance of this unit in one place. And as you see, the, where there is a, a new look of, new of uh, um, um, items, and um, uh, this is what uh, we did. We, we improved the uh, new look of the items. And one of the addition which we uh, create for items and uh, to uh, build a more visibility is the utilization dashboard. The utilization dashboard will show you um, the sales uh, for the particular unit for the last five years, the utilization last five years, and uh, by the unit numbers, it will show the analysis about uh, uh, the availability and deploy days for every particular unit. Uh, uh, rental unit statuses will showing as well. So there are several several categories and uh, which. Uh, uh, you can sort and select uh, showing you the total cost of ownership of the um, um, ROI for the um, particular rental unit uh, and uh, number of jobs uh, and average uh, job uh, revenue for um, different, different types of units. So uh, this utilization dashboard uh, again show connect to the particular unit uh, and uh, will show you uh, the information about about the unit um, uh, profitability and uh, utilization. Uh, and another addition, uh, it's a revenue dashboard showing you uh, the total revenue by year per, per month, uh, comparing uh, the different revenue from different clients, uh, um, total revenue allocation between uh, rental services and goods, uh, and uh, uh, revenue by items uh, showing you what uh, is the um, uh, revenue allocation between units. And uh, another view of the revenue dashboard showing you uh, the uh, difference between uh, year, uh, so how the revenue changed from year to, uh, to year and uh, the percentage of the change. Another big addition of uh, uh, the, the entire database is the KPIs uh, where you can set up uh, particular KPIs and track them. Uh, depends on what uh, kind of preference you have. Say, for example, the entire fleet utilization, uh, the um, could be uh, the sales per customer, understanding what is your sales goals and what kind of uh, sales revenue you have uh, per particular um, uh, actual versus there's the versus. Um, goal and uh, set up the uh, profitability results as well. So you can uh, manage uh, this uh, on the daily basis and see that uh, goal versus actual uh, results. The uh, big addition of rigor uh, is uh, uh, two things which we uh, see that we can extend the um, ability of our platform. And uh, uh, one of the thing which uh, we, uh, doing right now, it's the um, uh, adding the digital signatures through the uh, Panda doc and uh, uh, talking about the chatbot. And I'd like to pass the mic to Arsen. So he will present the uh, digital si signature scenario with Panda docs integration and uh, the um, uh, chatbot uh, with Telegram. Thank you, Michael. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. So let's go ahead and discuss the digital signatures. Now, I am not going to assume that anyone here who's here today uh, doesn't know the significance of the digital signatures, so we're not going to spend time on discussing why we need that. Rather, we're going to focus on what we have in rigor. As of today, uh, we already have shown uh, Pandadoc semi-integrated uh, feature in rigor during our user conference a few weeks ago. Uh, and what have changed after that session is that we have added several new documents to this feature and we are able to use 
Pandadoc for basically every document in rigor that requires a signature. So be it the quote, the bids, the tickets, the invoice, et cetera, so on and so forth. How it works, uh, we have the document print form. When we launch the print form, and we're gonna see this in action in a few minutes, we, when we launch the print form, we are presented with the option to select the Pandadoc uh, digital signature. And when clicking the button, our database connects to the Pandadoc server uh, and uh, asks basically to sign the document. So the process is we send the document for signature. When the document is signed, we receive the uh, signed document via the PDF attachment, which can be either in database or we can receive in our email. So let's go ahead to the next slide, which is basically a pre-recorded video, and I'm going to try to comment through it and see what we have right here. So we're going to create a simple RSA in our demo database, uh, and you can see the Panda Dog button right in the top of the RSA list. So just a very simple RSA, we're going to select the OFS type, the oil field services and the client and the location and just add one simple service. So we can generate a basic print form. I believe it's going to be the service order and see how the Panda Dog will be working on based, based on that print form. Now, uh, clicking on the print inside the document will invoke the uh, action to select the print form. So yes, service order. We can see we have our service order and the Panda Dog button up. And it's going to come back at us with the question that we need to select the Panda Dog recipient. And it has to be done because it has to be tied to some person with an email address in our database. So we're going to select the person who we are going to send this uh, document for signature save our uh, RSA and try again. Service order. And when we click on print, the action is invoked. It's going to ask if we want to sign it. We say yes, and we just wait for a couple of seconds. It's going to come back uh, and tell us that it's sent to Pandadoc. Now what's going to happen in the background? Pandadoc is going to send the document for signature to the recipient, which in this case happens to be me. So we're going to see it in my email. So. In a few seconds, we'll receive the email and open it up. And we have the link to the document on the Pandadoc server. So let's open the document and try to sign it. Now, obviously, it's going to come back to us in a PDF-ish like form. So we can click to sign. And you're going to be able to choose the color of your signature, the handwriting style, or you can even try to sign on the screen by yourself. Select the date for non-repudiation and finalize the document. Finalizing will uh, sign this document on the Pandadoc server. And you can directly either access it through this uh, link at the top, download the signed PDF now, or you can wait and it's going to uh, attach both in our database and come to us in an email form. So let's first see the email form. It will take a couple of seconds. And back to our email. So the message is going to con contain the PDF attachment and the uh, Adobe Reader contains a function that is going to verify the signature. So you can see that it's signed and the signatures are valid. And also we're going to have the certificate with the QR code, the barcode, the even the IP address and the details of the person who signed it. So we have it in our email. And the uh, green uh, Panda Dog button will allow us to update our RSA list and we will get a green paper clip next to our RSA to indicate that the document is attached and signed. So we can see the attached document and the green paper clip next to the uh, RSA. So this is basically how the Panadoc is going to work. It's going to allow us to have a digitally signed copies of each document and it's going to uh, eliminate the need of paper copies. So. Pandadoc done, let's move on to the next part of our integrations and talk about Telegram. Now, uh, for people who don't know, Telegram is, or rather used to be a messaging app, which uh, basically blew up and turned into a full-fledged 
social, uh, I, I'm not going to say media platform, but I'm going to say social messaging platform, which is highly secure. It's a peer-to-peer -peer network and it's highly encrypted. So the communication between the two nodes in the network is basically very secure and no one else can see or decrypt the messages. And we have decided to use this system uh, for us to be able to uh, present reports on demand to our clients and uh, use um, document approvals in this scenario. So how it works? First of all, obviously, you're going to have to download the Telegram uh, application and it's cross-platform. Uh, cross you can use it on your desktop. It's going to be on your laptop, on, my, on your mobile device, etc. The next, uh, the next very uh, important thing is going to be the configuration of the Telegram in your database. And we are going basically to create a Telegram bot designed specifically for your database and for your access. We're going to set up the database in the way that uh, the only people who can access the, the bot would be from your client side who have access basically to your database. And you're going to be using the Telegram bot to communicate with your database Basically, it's going to act as your assistant because you're going to tell uh, it to do some predefined actions and it's going to uh, provide you with the results. Again, so let's move to the next slide. And again, a little pre-recorded video is going to uh, run on the left and you can see how basically you can use it in uh, today's state. So it has down on the bottom, it has a button called reports. When you click on it, it's going to present you with the available reports that you can actually download and whenever you click or oh, tap on either one of them it's going to generate the pdf form and just send it to you the next steps which are currently in the final stages of development are going to be the document approvals which will allow you to approve a well, let's say a quote or a po or an rsa through telegram without the need of accessing your database so you will receive a notification. It will tell you that uh, you have a PO for uh, approval pending. You can op open up the PO and either approve it or reject through Telegram. That's basically it for Telegram. And let's move on to the next slide. Thank you. Thank you, Rosen. Uh, and I, I'd like to add one, 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 one more thing. So regarding this, uh, the reason why we have this, uh, uh, because in many cases, um, uh, you know, clients asking, okay, ha can we can we run the reports in the mobile application? But uh, the mobile application in many cases is just, just desynchronized with the database and uh, we're trying to find the right way how we can extract data uh, from the database without uh, connecting to the database. So, I mean, uh, from, from the mobile uh, application. And uh, the Telegram chatbot is a good tool uh, which uh, we can utilize and uh, work uh, as a, a reporting tool. And uh, for the future, it will be a document approval uh, function. And uh, we're right now testing the document approval functionality there as well. So uh, imagine that you receive the um, uh, notification and you can approve uh, jobs, POs uh, by uh, clicking one button. Uh, and uh, it's very convenient and very fast and efficient way uh, to uh, work with the database. So uh, another um, addition uh, which uh, we are um, presenting today uh, is a mobile oil field and field note and safety checklist. Uh, so you know that uh, rigor is uh, heavy used in, in the field and uh, uh, used in the office, shop, yard, and uh, uh, we uh, have mobile applications uh, which uh, can be connected to the rear in different uh, ways. Uh, so it's a mobile ERP thin client, mobile applications. However, in many cases, uh, there are several several situations when we need to um, have this um, uh, document generated not in the uh, cloud database, but in the field. So when the field technician uh, needs to uh, create a new document by himself or, uh, and in many cases that happen when uh, you have the repairs or maintenance requests from the client and uh, uh, you're not able to connect uh, uh, to the database from the mobile phone because you have no internet connectivity. So in this case, uh, we create uh, a special document called field node, which uh, works as the uh, pre-document uh, store all the data uh, which we have in uh, 
um, the um, field and uh, then uh, create uh, the ticket uh, uh, in the database. So Arsene, please show us what, uh, what we have here and uh, how it works. Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, let's move on to the next slide. Again, and again, it's going to play a pre-recorded simple video. It's going to show how it's done in the uh, mobile application. But what uh, is important is that you will have the ability to uh, set triggers to invoke the repair card, maintenance card, uh, and ticket automatic generation in your database upon the uh, let's say arrival of the connection. Now, when your connection is coming to, uh, uh, when your connection comes back on, your your app will sense it and will try to synchronize. The synchronization will invoke the trigger to generate a maintenance card or a repair card in the system. Now you can set up different parameters. You can set it for approval, like uh, parameters like in-shop or uh, in-field repair or maintenance. You can set it for approval or in process statuses for the documents, which are going to apply directly to the uh, created repair card, maintenance card, or ticket themselves. Those statuses are not going to apply to the field note. And you will be able to, uh, as said, automatically generate the uh, uh, tickets and cards in the database and not to worry to have to uh, go to find an internet connection or try to synchronize, et cetera, and so on and so forth. Let's move on to the next uh, slide, which will present us with the uh, couple slides from the live database. Now, one very important thing to note here is that field notes in the cloud are not going to be editable. You will, you will not be able to change anything in the field note. The sole purpose of having these documents in the cloud is for you to be able to view it and maybe just find, find the trails of documents that they were uh, used to create for. Now on your screen, you on the back see the uh, created repair card. On the front, you see the created maintenance card. They both have uh, all the parameters, all the tabs, all the checks, the crew and time tabs, whatever uh, you will need to input in the cards. It's all, uh, it's all going to be there. And another very important thing to note, while creating the field note uh, document in the mobile, if you set the, uh, if you want to create a new repair card, new maintenance card, you basically uh, create a new field node and use that document to uh, invoke uh, invoked document creation automatically in the database. However, you can see uh, the card number field on the uh, repair card slide we have on the back. Now, if you know that there is a repair card created for that uh, particular unit number that you're selecting, or if there is a maintenance card, or if there is a ticket, you can use the ticket and card numbers in the field note, and the uh, system is not going to create a new one, it's just going to update the existing information and the existing document. That's all about the field notes. Let's move to the next slide. Yeah, I think, thank you, Arsene. I, I'd like to add one more thing. So there are three scenarios how the field node can work uh, in the real uh, uh, field uh, operations. So uh, one thing when, um, again, we, we assume that uh, the field technician uh, not able to uh, connect to the internet and uh, uh, download those tickets from the cloud. And in this case, they start running the field node. And uh, the beauty of the uh, field node that um, you can uh, use only two parameters, uh, the unit number and uh, the um, type of uh, service. So repairs and maintenance or, or, or tickets uh, in the future. Uh, I mean, um, return tickets. Um, so in, in this case, um, the, the field technician uh, need to know um, only, only two things. So the unit number and um, uh, what they what they will do so they enter that stuff and uh, uh, the system will uh, generate automatically the ticket this is the one scenario when uh, a field technician received the notification from the client and uh, they ad hoc just start the job and uh, the uh, ticket created another scenario when uh, the dispatcher uh, creates the ticket uh, number and then send the ticket number to the field technician and the field technician enter this ticket number. So in this case, this field node will not create a new ticket, but will uh, export information from the field node to that ticket. And the first scenario when uh, the um, a field technician uh, creates these, uh, this field node, uh, uh, enter this, uh, uh, all the information and the, and the information pop up automatically. So 
uh, it's very convenient uh, um, um, tool and um, we have a couple of clients who started using that and they are really happy and uh, uh, creating um, dozens of the documents per day uh, because the, the situation which they, they addressed to us uh, was particular that uh, the field technician couldn't connect to the cloud database. And another thing which uh, uh, we'd like to show you today is a safety checklist, uh, the uh, universal safety checklist with the checklist template. So Arsen, floor is yours again. So please move forward. Right. So yes, uh, the safety checklist. Uh, we did actually uh, have safety uh, templates and documents in one of our mobile applications, which uh, it was, we call the yellow app the field uh, mobile oil field application but now we have extending the extended the safety functionality to our mobile thing client which as you know is the always online version of our mobile suit so what we have there is the ability to create a universal safety checklist. We have the checklist properties, properties that you can set up and the parameters, which will be based on the properties and you can use them in your uh, safety templates. So you set up the safety templates, you can even integrate the digital signatures inside your templates and checklists, and you can have all the uh, field technicians or client parties, which are going to be participating in the transaction of those documents, uh, sign those documents digitally. So we have uh, it deployed currently in a couple of databases. We are still in the final testing mode, but it's a powerful feature. And we obviously know that safety in the oil field is a very, very important topic. So it's gonna allow us to cover a whole lot of uh, aspects when it comes to safety uh, operations in the oil field. So that's that's it. Good, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Arsene. Um, this is actually uh, the ongoing development uh, uh, thing because we, we had a very good reaction from different clients and uh, they like to utilize this tool in more and more deep uh, um, logic uh, behind uh, every single action, uh, talking about, say, for example, if it's not safe to proceed, they stop the operations and uh, uh, connect to the dispatcher or managers. And uh, uh, th that kind of notifications available, uh, will be available uh, soon. And um, uh, again, we will develop this tool uh, in the future. So um, this is the um, uh, very, very uh, different uh, improvements of different stages of different uh, things. So we have uh, more than uh, uh, 14 uh, new reports, uh, 26 plus new enhancement. Uh, uh, we uh, added the uh, monthly end procedure. Uh, we add mobile internal job tickets, totals and journals, uh, oil field job dashboard, location history dashboard, uh, working with uh, constantly working with the improvements of the analytics and uh, providing the um, uh, enhancement uh, with the different documents, uh, say, for example, the location requests, uh, user notifications tools, PO approvals, HR module. Uh, sales module was enhanced uh, in, in uh, uh, many, many things. So there are several, several print forms there. So um, the oil field CRM module uh, will uh, have uh, the sales scorecards uh, and repair transfers um, uh, give us an ability to transfer repair unit uh, from one location to another locations and different kind of reports. So uh, all those improvements, um, uh, ready to, to uh, be delivered. And uh, we uh, usually uh, providing the uh, following update schedule. So we update the sandbox, testing uh, internally, testing with the clients in some cases, uh, uh, run the live database update and uh, new module activations if uh, necessary. So uh, we uh, have four tiers of uh, clients uh, for updates. Uh, they a good thing that um, updates already started. We have a uh, first group, we finished everything. Uh, and uh, we have group two updating to this week and uh, the next uh, uh, group three and group four. So you should receive, uh, as a user, you should receive the notification from our operations team about the update schedule. And as soon as you uh, receive that uh, and the, the update, so you will uh, easily recognize the new release 
by the, your home page. So at the top of the screen, you will see the Rigger 8.5 and a particular version of 8.5. And um, uh, the home page will have HR safety and purchases uh, 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 folders. And of course, uh, you will see the Rigger 8.5 Fort Worth uh, logo in the home page as well. So that's uh, that was a very, very short presentation of uh, all our uh, new features in uh, 8.5. Uh, there are lots of different features. And uh, if you uh, have some questions or particular questions uh, uh, about a particular feature, feel free to contact us anytime and uh, we'll show you um, how it works, how it can be uh, applicable to your business, to your particular situation. And if you uh, happens that you're new with Rigor and you'd like to see the entire system, so feel free to book a demo and uh, contact us. Uh, we will happy to show you uh, what we have and how Rigor can help to optimize your oil field service operations. So thank you very much. Uh, uh, have a wonderful uh, rest of the week. And uh, um, yeah, we will... Um, connect with you uh, next uh, next um, uh, next week by the way uh, we will be in a Doug Berman conference and uh, we will present uh, this uh, um, features in live so uh, feel free to join us um, uh, in uh, Fort Worth uh, and uh, see rigor Fort Worth uh, release there thank you so much and have a, a wonderful day